I still remember her WhatsApp profile photo very clearly. Four young children smiling joyfully. This is Sergeant Juhaini Esmir. She's bold, she's brave, and she protects her community on a daily basis. But there was one enemy she could not see or fight. She was diagnosed with cervical cancer in her early 30s. Yes. She had no symptoms, she had no pain. But this is not a story of tragedy. Today, she is cancer-free and her eldest child is going to high school. And it all started with this. Today, with a simple swap, women like Juhaini can perform her own cervical screening test. For the longest time, women only depended on the pap smear. But science has now shown that the HPV test is a far superior screening test compared to the pap smear. And it will protect women from getting cervical cancer. So, imagine if you could do your own screening test without the inconvenience of going to a clinic or a hospital. And then imagine if you could get the results delivered to you through your mobile phone, through WhatsApp, without going to a hospital or clinic, and then knowing where to go if you had an abnormal results, without getting into the complex healthcare system that is in many places. This is what Program ROSE is. ROSE stands for Removing Obstacles to Cervical Screening. It is our own homegrown Malaysian innovation. So, imagine women having to go to a hospital having a pap smear done. It is the most uncomfortable, embarrassing, and sometimes painful procedure. Women have to lie down in a very vulnerable position have an instrument that's often cold inserted into them and then having a brush to take cells from their cervix. And they have to do this nearly every year or every three years when they're well. The inconvenience of going to a clinic, queuing in line, waiting in the doctor's office just to have this done. So central to program roles is empowering women the ability to have a dignified way to have their self-test done using a swab just to have an HPV PCR test done, not dissimilar to what a COVID test is. But beyond a test, it is the seamless ability to start the whole screening procedure. Women are educated what the test is about they know exactly where they have to go and it can be done in places that are convenient to them, such as their workplace, their home, their place of worship, without having, having to step into a clinic at all. So, when I met Sergeant Juhaini back in 2021, she had never had a pap smear in her entire life, despite having had four children. She had her first rose test at the police headquarters in Bukit Aman. Within two weeks, she had her results, she had a diagnosis, and she was guided to have her treatment done. And she's now well. So as a gynae cancer doctor, one of the words that changes the lives of individuals and their families immediately is this the diagnosis of cancer. And when I look at the faces of individuals, when I tell them that they do not have cancer or they have cancer, the emotions that I see on their face is intense, it's immediate, and it's palpable. Yet today, one of the most common cancers we see in Malaysia 
is cervical cancer and it happens typically to young women like Juhaini at the prime of their lives. In fact, that's the case globally. The tragedy is today, mothers, sisters, wives and daughters do not need to die from cervical cancer. It is preventable and easily treatable if it's diagnosed early. Ladies and gentlemen, today, cervical cancer can be eliminated in our lifetime. The World Health Organization has declared cervical cancer to be the first cancer in human history that can be eliminated. And one of the paths to that is to get rid of the 15 pap smears in your lifetime and down to only two tests in a woman's lifetime, two swaps, two HPV tests. In fact, if every woman in the world who needs a pap smear today has the opportunity to have an HPV test, we would immediately halve the deaths of cervical cancer today half of them today. So why is the world not rallying to do this? Do we need more research? No, we don't. In fact, the financial argument for cervical cancer elimination is done. For every dollar you spend in eliminating cervical cancer, governments will gain $27 in return. But this is the hard fact. Cervical cancer is a disease of social inequity happening to women who do not have the ability to speak for themselves and they are from the socially disadvantaged population. They don't have access to screening. The late Dr. Muhammad Fathala stated very clearly Women are not dying from diseases we cannot treat. They are dying because societies have yet to decide if their lives are worth saving. So are we able to reach this audacious goal of cervical cancer elimination? And my answer is a resounding yes. Yeah. Program Rose has demonstrated that it is possible to reframe how we do healthcare. Prevention of diseases, not just cervical cancer, does not need to happen in clinics or hospitals. We should not need to go through the archaic system of appointments and sitting in empty rooms waiting for our turn. Consider what Uberization has done to the way we shop and we dine and how we get things. But Uber and Grab do not own any restaurants or cars or shops. Airbnb does not own any property. Likewise, Program Rose does not own any clinics, any hospitals, or do we have a large army of healthcare professionals. Program Rose is about communities, screening communities, and looking after ourselves. It is called self-care. And today, Program Rose, with the help of an all-society approach, has screened more than 32,000 women in Malaysia, from Perlis all the way to Sabah through the help of 800 volunteers. And we have prevented more than 200 mothers, women and children, young families from potentially losing their mothers today. More than 200 women. So if we ask ourselves, what is the one prescription women need for their health? It is power. Let us be the voice that will empower those who do not have voices. See. Program Rose and the call towards cervical cancer elimination is a great opportunity for change 
and for us to radically change how we can do health. Today, you and I are in this part of history where we can and we have the responsibility to play a role in cervical cancer elimination. It does not fall on the shoulders of healthcare professionals or governments. It falls on our shoulders. Let us decide to be the society that will choose to prevent and save women from, society, from cervical cancer. I leave this question for you. Do you want to be part of the legacy so that we can live in a world free from cervical cancer? Thank you very much.